Hi, y'all. Thank you for joining us for our Beef Brunch News Update for Tuesday, December 7th. Um, we are getting, I guess, kind of getting ready for Christmas. I like to say that. We've got one more news update with y'all before the end of the year. Um, but I think we're kind of, just in terms of production, kind of at this cross-section of we've got some guys that are finishing up their fall calving or are still in fall calving. And we've got some guys that are looking forward probably into prepping for the spring calving after the, the first of the year hits um, and going into that. So, I know, I guess it was last week and then this week, some Lee that we were turning calves out on ryegrass there. Um, so grass is starting to look good. I visited with Bradley Poussin in South Louisiana, Southwest Louisiana. Um, he said some of those guys south of I-10 were actually being able to push cows into the marsh. Um, so they got fences repaired post hurricane and, and were able to start doing that. So everyone's kind of just gearing up and getting ready for winter here. Um, I say that, and I think it was in the seventies, maybe eighties <laughs> over the past few days. Um, so it doesn't really feel like it, but, but that's kind of where we're at, I think, um, statewide, but Vince, I'll let you go ahead and move on into our update for central and south. Yeah. Uh, thank you all for having me. Uh, yeah, the temperature was, I mean, on Saturday and Sunday was certainly not December 2nd and 3rd weather. It was in the, 80s, you know, 81, 82, 83 degrees, it was really, really hot, uh, you know, for this time of the year. But it's beneficial because, I mean, our ryegrass is struggling. Um, as of yesterday, we got an inch or so of rain in the area. Uh, that's going to be very beneficial. There was a lot of fertilizer top dress that went out on some uh, winter pastures. So uh, hopefully it's not too much rain because uh, $800 ton uh, nitrogen sources uh, uh, hit you in the pocketbook pretty hard, pretty quick. So Hopefully uh, we get some benefit out of that. And we have some areas that have really good looking ryegrass that was planted early. Uh, we, we did get some rains, uh, just some very, very low measurable rains um, in the last 15 days or so. But today's, uh, yesterday's rain is going to really set it off to get things moving in the right direction. Uh, quite a bit of haze being fed. Um, as we've talked about in our past news updates, uh, any, any supplement choice you're going to make is going to be expensive. Uh, but we certainly want to keep it keep it in front of them before uh, going into the ryegrass. Uh, as Ashley mentioned, the uh, fall cabin is winding down. Most everyone has has completed that. A lot of bulls are being fertility tested. Uh, you know, thinking about the spring cabin uh, or spring breeding season, and uh, you know, a lot of people you know scratching for bulls at this time. If if they have bulls that are not testing, a lot of our uh, fall bull sales of full two year old bulls that were sold, uh, we're having to pick up some scraps and search for them pretty hard. Um, but with that being said, there's going to be some palpating going on before the end of the year. We, you know, sale barns are basically closed in, in South Louisiana uh, for thank for the Thanksgiving holiday uh, the sale uh, last or early last week. The sales uh, proved to be pretty good coming off of that holiday uh, break uh, with you know six weight calves being in a dollar thirty to dollar sixty depending on uh, you know condition and, and type and kind. You know, so. Um, there was some good money on that size calves. I'm assuming that they have a pretty decent wheat crop uh, in the plains because uh, those heavier calves obviously brought some some better money than than lighter calves. Um, as we we continue to mention, um, you know, call cows are still bringing a, a fairly good price, uh, so it's it's a good idea to get those out of the way of of taking up any of that uh, winter feeding period and and also your hay stocks and and or uh, winter pastures that are going to be so expensive to keep going this winter and into the spring. So um, with that being said, and some, you know, some herbicide treatments are going out on some of this buttercup, you know, with these 80 degree temperatures we had, they starting to push out pretty hard uh, so that uh, 2,4-D treatment on some of these pastures is proven to work very well. And, and we've seen some of that going out uh, not to rob any of that $800 fertilizer. So um, that's about all I have right now. And uh, hopefully wish everyone a We'll, we'll have another news update, but uh, the holiday season is upon us and everybody's thinking, um, you know, time off of the holidays. But um, we're, we're definitely in the, the hay feeding season and supplement feeding season going, waiting on ryegrass and should turn around quickly after the rain we had coming through with this last front. And more is expected on Saturday and Sunday. So hopefully we get things going in the right direction. Thank you. Uh, Lee, what about in Northwest Louisiana? Thank you, Ashley. Glad to be with you all today and, and uh, certainly grateful for the holiday season and, and, and what a good time of year it is. I, I wish that I could report that North Louisiana got a, got an inch or two of rain over the last couple of days, but that's simply not the case. We 
uh, th this latest rain that moved in, well, it, it would have been on Monday, um, kind of started along I-20. There, there was a little bit north of I-20, but very, very little. Most areas in northwest Louisiana, I can't speak for Jason's part of the country, but most areas uh, over in northwest um, got very little rain out of it. I haven't uh, received any rainfall updates yet. Uh, checked the drought monitor uh, just a little while ago, and you know, most all of north Louisiana is in a D1 drought, but then what surprised me when I checked it, uh, some portions over Jason's territory over, over northeast Louisiana have moved into a D, D2 drought category. So that's a, a degradation as far as uh, drought status. And uh, the data that, uh, or the, the uh, y'all excuse me for that, the, um, the data and the interpretation of the data that I've seen says that that's a, a kind of a, a short term drought, that this isn't long term. But, you know, like I was talking to a fellow the other day and he brought up 2011 and I said, oh my goodness, that's, this kind of harkens back to that time, you know, whenever we went into fall and winter, it was dry and uh, it stayed dry. And if y'all remember what 2011 looked like, it wasn't, it wasn't pleasant. And I, I hope that uh, the, the experts are right, that this is a short term thing. I noticed there's some, uh, uh, forecast for rain coming up this next weekend, and I, I sure hope we can catch it. Ryegrass is 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 drought stressed, is the way to put it. You know, uh, Ashley mentioned we did get some cattle turned out on some grass, and there at the Hill Farm Research Station, had a guy call me the other day. He was driving by, and he said, "What have y'all done different from what everybody else is doing?" And I said, "Not not a thing. Uh, uh, we just looked up and had a little soil moisture, got it planted." uh but but nothing different no huge amounts of fertilizer or anything we just happen to be luck, luck uh, lucked up enough to to get some cattle on grass but even then we went with a lighter stocking rate than what uh what we would ordinarily do whenever we stock these pastures and so on and so forth everybody else pretty tough way i i, I know very few I, I i know i said this in the last news update but i don't know anybody on grass right now i'm sure there's somebody somewhere that's grazing some ryegrass, but uh, I haven't seen them and haven't talked to them. And of course, that's all tied in on this supplementation, you know, couldn't come at a at a, at a worse time. I, I talked to somebody the other day and we were talking about these input costs and and uh, everything rising and, and what the future is going to hold. And after about five minutes, they looked at me and they said, boy, you're just a uh, uh, a bag of good news, aren't you? I said, yeah, just uh, call, call me Mr. Optimistic right now. But anyway, there are some calves and, and some yearlings being moved to the sale barns and, and being sold right now. Uh, you know, this market, it keeps creeping up. I'm sure Jason will touch on it. Uh, the, the future looks kind of rosy if you go by the futures. And, and uh, I think they may be... Uh, may be a little down today. I hadn't checked it religiously today, but uh, the, these cash prices are, you know, kind of creeping up at these local livestock auctions. But it, it leaves a lot of folks wondering, do we need to go on ahead and, and get uh, in, any of these bigger cattle marketed right now, or should we wait? Is this thing about to explode? And I don't have an answer for that. It just shows how gun shy uh, us as cattle producers have gotten over this market. You know, we see a market start building and thinking we're going to be able to get some money in there. And all of a sudden, one of these black swan events or something will kick the kick one of the legs right out from under the stool we're sitting on. And and we go back in the hole kind of. Uh, and I'm sure Jason will touch a lot on slaughter numbers or uh, during his report. But slaughter numbers are encouraging, I would say. Uh, and so moving forward, you know, people are kind of thinking about marketing some cattle uh, if, if they're available. Uh, a lot of bulls being traded around and cha changing hands as being stated. And so we're just hoping for some rain and, and a drop in fertilizer prices and, and maybe some of this stuff will level out a little bit. That's all I've got, Ashley. Thank you. Jason, your turn for Northeast and our market please. 
Yeah, like Lee said, it is extremely dry on the northeast side of the state. Uh, I've had a lot of conversations with folks that are looking at their ryegrass plantings, and um, uh, it's it's kind of disheartening right now. I mean, we definitely need some moisture. It does not look like out of this system that's rolling through uh, currently, it just doesn't look like uh, north Louisiana is going to receive much of that. Um, uh, but like Lee said, we've got another system coming in. Uh, later in the week, so hopefully we'll uh, we'll get a little bit of moisture out of that and some benefit. Um, looking at our markets, uh, uh, Lee and Vince have both have alluded to uh, improvements in the markets a little bit, uh, continued improvements. I'll put it that way. Um, my glass is normally half full, uh, so I'll say continued optimism in the market. Um, it can, this past week, uh, ending December third, concluded with some stronger prices and another large slaughter volume. Uh, so we'll have another uh, uh, this week uh, and next week. So we're recording this on a Monday. Uh, so this week and next week will be our last two normal slaughter weeks for the year. Uh, so a lot of these processors are trying to um, uh, get their coffers full of cattle um, and pre- preparations for uh, uh, for the holiday season. So we would expect that. Uh, maybe we'll have another pretty good slaughter uh, volume this week and then maybe a light volume in the week following that. Uh, in the box B complex, the choice cutout moved $6.08 lower this week to $273.17 with a choice select spread of $13.74. Um, and with, uh, with the big demand or big push for the holiday, um, holiday time, um, and there was some some that caught off guard that it dropped again. Some folks were uh, expecting that to, uh, to to kind of remain steady or even climb a little bit. But uh, um, with not a whole lot of trading uh, in the box beef complex beyond next week, um, I, I'm really not for sure what that'll do, but I don't expect for it to. If it does climb, I wouldn't expect it to climb much. Probably just remain steady to a little bit lower. Light trade concluded the week with all cash prices two to three dollars higher on our live cattle. Uh, sales in Texas and Kansas were mainly 141 to 142, with a few cattle in Nebraska trading at 142.50. In the five area feeding region, negotiated cash sales ranged from 130.75 to 142.50, and that was on a confirmed 112,080 head. Uh, fed cattle prices uh, are expected to continue to uh, to get higher into the spring, um, uh, yet some weakness could occur in January as the year-end holidays slow the slaughter pace. Uh, but uh, if you if you look at some of these future prices that I'm going to talk about here in just a second, uh, uh, end of the spring of 2022, these prices are looking well. Uh, cattle futures remain deeply discounted to the cash price. So if you look at the futures. And the cash price futures is trading more closely. Um, um, cash price is trading more closely to that April contract right now uh, instead of the nearby contract. Uh, so futures end of the week with December trading up 25 cents at 137.67, February down 62 cents at 138.95, and April down 45 cents at 142.15. So. Um, April contracts around 142, and our uh, our current cash market is trading uh, in that uh, in that same pace. So uh, that's uh, they're interesting what's happening right now in in the futures market. Five to six hundred pound steers, medium and large ones and twos, sold from 153.78 to 168.01. Uh, that's three dollars to six dollars higher when compared to the previous week. Uh, seven to eight hundred pound feeder steers, medium and large ones and twos, sold from one thirty three forty six to one fifty five thirty seven, which is steady to three dollars higher when compared to the previous week. On that same class of cattle, futures ended the week with January trading down a dollar sixty five at one sixty four twelve, March down a dollar twenty two at one sixty seven ten, and April down a dollar five at one sixty nine eighty five. And even though some of those are trading down. Uh, whenever the market's closed on Friday, um, and we're still pretty much steady with how they opened up on Monday of the same week. Um, so uh, there was a little bit of rise in those. So the opening and closing for Monday and Friday of this past week uh, were pretty close. 
Uh, lean coal cows, so we've seen a little bit of decline in them, as we would expect. The lean coal cows average 47 cents a pound, which is about nine cents a pound lower whenever we compare that to the previous week. Uh, looking at our feedstuffs, uh, soybean meal is down $17.90 at 372.80. Soybean hulls are steady at $155 a ton. Cotton seed meal is down $7.50 at $307.50 a ton. Whole cotton seed is steady at $265 a ton. Rice bran is steady at $195 a ton. Corn gluten feed, that's the 60% protein product, is up $5 at $655 a ton. DDGs are up $10 at $170 a ton. And corn is up two cents a bushel at $5.97 a bushel. And I will turn it back over to you, Ashley. Thank you. I was leaving Rustin today on my way to Alexandria in the uh, radio DJ was talking about the rain and he said I something about people not being happy for the rain I was like I think a lot of people <laughs> at least a lot of people that we work with are, are happy to have a little bit of rain right now um, so with that uh, the only event that I think we have coming up um, to wrap us up this year other than our, our last news update um, is going to be our last webinar our beef brunch educational series webinar and um, that's next Tuesday December 14th and is that next Tuesday or two Tuesdays I'm losing track. December 14th. I said I was going to get the dates right on this one and I'm losing it. That is next Tuesday, a week from now. Um, December 14th. I was so close. Um, we have Dr. Gary Hay coming in and talking selecting beef bulls for terminal crossbreeding programs. Um, again, that's a live event. It's at 1030. You can go to lsuaccenter.com um, slash beef brunch and you'll be able to click the link there. Um, and then the we, re, we will record it and get it posted. Um, our last news update should be December 21st that we'll be back with you on that. Um, I think the last thing that I have just to wrap up um, is if you have any um, topics that you would like for us to cover, any things you want us to cover on these webinars or people um, to cover on the webinars, not necessarily the four of us, but things that you want to hear, please reach out to me, let me know, um, send us some ideas because we're working on putting those together for next year. Um, and with that, we'll let y'all go and we'll be back with you in a few minutes. <laughs>